Thank you very much, Stephen, for a very kind introduction. Good morning to, to all distinguished guests and participants here at the Crew Camp Connect Global Main Conference. We are indeed honored to be part of this international gathering that includes industry stalwarts and game changers. On behalf of the Philippine government, allow me to present the assessment and initiatives in building an integrated and globally competitive maritime industry. We will begin with the fundamentals of the Maritime Industry Authority, where you will be able to know more about the agency's mandate, vision, mission, and core values. Then I shall provide you with a common operating picture that shows where the marina is today. In setting the course, we shall discuss the primary drivers of our maritime industry strategy. Then we transition the next waypoints where, where I will give you an overview of each of the eight priority projects of the 10-year maritime industry development plan. Along the way, adjustment must be made to compensate for the sit and dream, to keep track in pursuit of our integrated and globally competitive Philippine maritime industry. Pursuant to the presidential decree 474 of 1974 and the succeeding supporting legislations thereafter, the Maritime Industry Authority, or MARINA, has the mandate to lead the way for the Philippine maritime industry, development, promotion, regulations, and rationalization of the industry and its concerned sectors and stakeholders form the foundation of our purpose and our goals. We envision to be the strong and dynamic maritime authority of the Philippines, supported by our mission to provide leadership in transforming the Philippines into a major maritime nation. The work we do is anchored on our core values, professionalism, integrity, and excellence. The maritime sector is classified into sea-based and land-based subsectors which encompass the country's core capabilities in shipping and fishing operations, the support capabilities in shipping, shipbuilding and ship repair, port management, maritime and cellular business, maritime education and training, and maritime administration, respectively. Despite the maritime sector challenges, the Philippines takes pride in our strong performance in complying with the international maritime manpower, safety and security, and marine environmental protection standards. This positioned the Philippines in the World Maritime Map as the leading source of seafarers, with more than 400,000 total deployed overseas and sea-based OFW's remittance amounting to $5.8 billion. The Philippines is also fourth largest ship producer in the world, based on gross tons, manufacturing more than 2,000 vessels in 2017. Based on the available data, the maritime sector is increasingly contributing to the country's economy. Today, the number speaks of vibrancy of, and potential that continue to invigorate the Philippine maritime seascape. In setting the course towards a strong maritime industry strategy, we refer to the national policies set out in the long-term development vision of the country stipulated in Ambition Natin 2040 the medium-term develop Philippine Development Plan, and the other plans and strategies, including the UN's Sustainable Development Goals 2030. These policies instruments 
serve as our guide in identifying the key thematic areas of the MIDB for the period 2019 to 2020. The updating and implementation of Maritime Industry Development Plan is our top priority of our agenda. We are centered in, our, in one goal, to accelerate the development of an integrated and competitive maritime industry through education, innovation, technology, and sustainability. The MIDP is consists of eight priority programs and projects that are identified and developed for implementation. First is the development of an international maritime hub. The Philippines is strategically situated along the international sea lanes of commercial ships catering to the world trade. Complemented by the country's maritime manpower, services, and shipbuilding, ship repair, such advantages can help transform the Philippines into a global maritime hub. Until recently, many of the country's rivers serve as the water courses to transport agricultural products from upstream communities to central markets. The development of coastal and inland water waterway transport system mainly aims to increase the efficiency, safety, and utility of transport system in the country's highly urbanized areas for enhancing navigability and quality of coastal and inland waters and improving connectivity within the inter-islands. Upgrading of domestic shipping in support of nautical highway development program is critical to the inter-island transport of peoples and goods. This is also indispensable in order to meet the demands for more economical, efficient, and safe domestic shipping services. The National Cruise Tourism Development Strategy and Action Plan of the Department of Tourism sets out strategic action to promote the country as a regional cruise center in Asia. The marina's role in support to the said plan in its goal by developing shipping services for maritime tourism. In the agriculture industry, Fishery is the second most important subsector in the Philippines. However, fishing sector is replete with problems due to the absence of comprehensive operational standards. Therefore, the MIDP included in its priority programs the strengthening of safety standards of fishing vessel operations in the Philippines through improved operational safety standards and increased fishing crew competency. Low public awareness and lack of crew training on safety standards for fishing, cruising, and shipping operations are critical elements of maritime safety that need attention in the enforcement of safety standards. Hence, the Philippine Maritime Safety Enhancement Program shall enhance the maritime safety of all Philippine registered vessels by developing and implementing a comprehensive safety plan. On Maritime Security Modernization Program, Marina's role will be more of a support than the Philippine Navy and Philippine Coast Guard through their Naval Modernization Program. The Maritime Information Management and Technology Center shall be established to collect and connect consolidated data within the maritime industry. With this priority program set to commence at the execution of the MIDP, the marina sails at full speed, 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 confident to accelerate the achievement of nationally integrated and globally competitive Philippine maritime industry. To compensate for the effect of set and drift, actions have been made in compliance to EMSA and in anticipation for the upcoming IMO state member audit scheme or the EMSAS. 
One of the Marina's priority list is the compliance of the Philippines to the requirements of the International Convention on SCCW 1978 as amended. As a signing party to the SCCW Convention, the Philippines is subjected to several inspections conducted by the European Maritime Safety Agency between 2006 to 2017. In July 2017, the Marina received the European Commission Assessment Report detailing 42 shortcomings under the areas of national policies and provisions Requirement for Certification, Administration, and Maritime Education and Training Institution. In line with the Marina's 31st October 2018 objective and in compliance with ISIS requirement, we are proud to report that we have submitted to the EC the actions and measures that were put in place addressing the 42 shortcomings. As part of our way ahead, we are currently working on the development of Marina Integrated Seafarer Management Online System, or the MISMO, a digital platform that will integrate the agency services and processes online. In order to sustain the implementation of the corrective actions in relation to our compliance with the European Commission, the whole of government approach is continually being employed by the Marina. Furthermore, strengthening Marina's authority as the single maritime administration is the issuance of Executive Order Number 63. The presidential order is a strong manifestation to support from the national government in harmonizing the Marina's administration of maritime training and education program. All these are geared towards the continuing EU recognition of STCW certificates issued by the Republic of the Philippines. Now let us have the updates on the Philippine preparatory activities toward compliance to the IMO Member State Audit Scheme or ITSAS. In 2009, the Philippines volunteered to undergo the B BIMSA's audit. We were found to have met most of our obligation with respect to the IMO mandatory requirements. However, there were nine recorded observations and five non-conformities. The years 2009 to 2016 were spent addressing the BIMSA findings and observations with the creation of the Marina MSAS TWG Support groups were created to handle the functional review of mandates and determine gaps in our legislations. In 2016, the TWD drafted the National Maritime Strategy, which was submitted for the consideration of other agencies. This jump started a strong collaboration and cooperation between different agencies in 2017 for the MSAS preparations. The interagency MAC audit was conducted starting in 2018 by a com com composite team of auditors. Various government agencies were subjected to the one-week rigorous audit by this team. The audit reports and action plans were submitted and discussed by the MSAS TWG, while the consolidated action plan will be reviewed and assessed by the MSAS Council. Then the ratification of the conventions will be continuous until 2021. All these actions are aimed to promote maritime safety and security and protection of our mar marine environment. Referring to these timelines, we are on track and we will be ready for the audit of the MSAS by 2021. All these developments and programs can only mean good and positive things for the Philippine maritime industry as we strive to reform, revitalize, and innovate for the future. The lessons of the past and the prospect of the future will be the wind that drives us onward, forward, 
upward in accordance with the standards of the international conventions. And with the support of the stakeholders and partners here today, we are optimistic that your marina is set to sail towards an integrated and globally competitive Philippine maritime industry. Maraming salamat po at mabuhay tayong lahat.